me. Hey guys, sorry, I'm um. Give me one moment. I'm gonna go and make another coffee in my moment. So, <laughs> I oh, don't bite, guys. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, if you are in Australia, um, or New Zealand, or this um part of the world, uh, good afternoon, evening. If you're anywhere else in the world, I hope everybody is well. This is our weekly Q and A, and if you have not met me um, yet, my name is Karen. So I am the um, the person who owns the page, the group here. I'm your trainer, and yeah, so I do a weekly Q and A where you can ask me any questions, anything that you're having an issue with with your off the track thoroughbred, um, what you'd like help with, um, some advice, anything. So um i've got a question to ask uh, i've got a question that someone has asked me so i'll go to that um but what i'm going to do if you give me one moment i'm going to make another coffee i love coffee and i've just about finished this one so i'll do that and then i'll answer the question if i can find it there we go Okay, so I'm just going into my phone because I can't. Oh, I might, oh, I might be able to open it up here. Actually, let's have a look. I did save it here as well. This one. Oh no, that's not it. What am I do? I'll just move this over to the side here. Here we go. I've got it here actually. Awesome. Okay. I can hear it as well. So I'm having a little bit of organizing myself, guys. Um, uh, I find the question here, it's a little bit easier for me to answer. I'm a little bit disorganized this morning. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going into, I can find the question easier in the group. Where am I? What's it doing? Oh, Facebook changes everything all the time. Don't, oh, here we go. Okay. There we go. I've had a little bit of a headache the last couple of days, guys. I've had my sinuses have been playing up and I just feel a little bit under the weather. Okay. So excuse me if I'm a little bit all over the place. Cool. Okay, so Nev has asked, can you talk about what unbalanced horses look, feel like, versus quite symptoms, early signs of body problems that you should be looking, looked further into, like in the early stages of training after a past vetting. How do you know if the horse is just unbalanced and can continue working through it versus has an issue with the body potentially and should be slowed down? This is a really good question. Um, and... Can you give me one second? I'll go and make my coffee and then I'll answer it. I'm such, I've just, I've been rushing this morning. I've got my coffee and I've nearly finished it. I'm going to make another one and I'll be back and I'll answer that. So bear with me. I'm a bit of a coffee addict, guys. Bear with me. I'm back. I'm back. 
so sorry. Oh, I just love coffee. Seriously, I think if I was, if I didn't go into horses, I would have been a barista. <laughs> I've got my little coffee machine there and I just love it. Um, and it, um, yeah, I could, I could go without food, but I couldn't ever go without water and coffee. <laughs> Okay, so the question from Nev is a really good one. I'm going to read it out again. I've got my little squiggies here. And it sort of blends in with a couple of questions that I know, a couple of issues that um, some members are having problems with in the group, um, with their horse not wanting to go around um, one way, so struggling to go either clockwise or anti-clockwise, left or right on, on the lunge. Um, they're, uh, you know, they're not wanting to go, they're jacking up, um, they're wanting to turn around if they go that way. So um, it, this, this is a good question because it sort of answers the lunging question as well. So I'm going to read out the question again if you missed it beforehand. So Nevers asked, can you talk about what unbalanced horses look, feel like versus quite symptoms, early signs of body problems that should be looked further into. Like in the early stages of training after a past vetting, how do you know if the horse is just unbalanced and can continue working through it versus has an issue with the body potentially and should be slowed down? So how am I gonna answer this one? Um, so I think the first thing to, I'm just going to get rid of this, is I first, um, if you're on never and you're listening, I want, first of all, I would like to know whether you're having, um, it, is this in hand and lunging or under saddle? I'll answer both, but uh, horse, um, yeah, first of all, so what you want to re realize first is with off-the-track off thoroughbreds, okay, they have come from a completely different, um, they're not like your normal riding equestrian horse. They've come from a completely different discipline. They've used their body in a completely different way and quite often for years and years, they don't know how to use their body in any other way other than in racing unless you've got an off-the-track thoroughbred that has been retrained um they only know how to use their body in ra for racing um they're also built a little bit too so the thoroughbred um horse is bred to run to gallop they're bred for speed so we have to con consider that as well they're not bred like your warm bloods and um your irish sport horses which are bred to um carry more weight on their hind end um the the thoroughbred racehorse is bred for endurance and bred for speed um you do get lines so you, um within the thoroughbred breed there's some some well-known lines um that are very good for um show jumping and eventing and that and that comes to do with some of it sometimes their confirmation and that but still we have to consider that they're bred to race they're bred um for endurance they're not bred to specifically do dressage and show jumping or you know pleasure or, or any of that really um so we have to consider their confirmation as such and usually um, they'll be quite heavy on the forehand um if you have any questions pop them in the comments while i'm talking about this because um i can i've got the comments here i can see so you look at so starting back when you're getting off the track thoroughbred you um need to presume that they're going to have balance issues um and they're going to have um they're going to be muscled up completely differently than than what what you're trying to achieve i mean lunging lunging and off the track thoroughbred is is i don't lunge i actually don't really even lunge much at, i don't traditionally lunge myself i do not stand in the in the middle and ask a horse to go around me even when i've got them up to a stage where I'm lunging, what I do is is basically an extension of my in-hand work. So I start off, and this is where you want to start off with the in-hand work. And as you have the horse under stimulus control, so you have trained them to be light to their stop and go responses, you can yield their hind quarters, you can ask them to turn in hand with their shoulders, and you've taught every single step. Then 
it's like your lead rope. You can move further away and you can move further away and you can, I, and I go from a leading position and then I turn around into more of the lunging position. So facing them and asking them to move, but I'm walking with them. So just say in arena, I'll be walking around, um, with them going straight and then I might do some large, large circles, a curve and then go straight again. So I don't lunge in the traditional sense. It's not good for the horse um, because circles, actually doing a circle in itself for an off the track thoroughbred is incredibly hard. You have to imagine how they're, um, how they're muscled. So I won't go too much into that because otherwise I'll go on a bit of a tangent. So we're going back to, um, getting an off the track thoroughbred straight off the track. So they've been vet checked. So Nev, I presume that um, your thoroughbred has been vet checked, um, they're off the track and uh, it's very hard, to, even if they have been retrained, you just don't know unless they're out competing or something. Um, you don't know. I, I always go back to basics anyway. So presuming that they've come out of racing, it's a, um, I look at it more as rehabilitation. So definitely presume that um can you talk about what unbalanced horses look feel like versus quiet symptoms early sign of body problems um we've had a vet check so you definitely want to eliminate any type of pain so your obvious signs of pain are uneven uneven gates okay so uneven so unsoundness some um lameness uh, pain over the back um, if you've had a vet check they've they've flexed up um, and and flexed the joints that's important to make sure there's no um, issues in any of the joints um, and I'd like to know um, so presume they're unbalanced because they're going to be unbalanced when they come out of racing they're going to be extremely unbalanced for what we want to do with them um, I've worked in racing and ridden track work for over 17 years. Um, I've recently just retired from track work after a long time. I know how racehorses work and I know um, how they feel and to take them off the track and to teach them um, a new set of skills, um, just learning like, you know, in training, getting them to be light with their stop and go and that, but also to rehabilitate their body, to teach them, um, you're really molding their body in a completely different way. And that takes time and that takes quite a long time. It's not something that you're going to be able to do in a few weeks or even, you, you'll see some differences over, you know, a couple of months, but it's not going to happen um, a few weeks and I, I, I don't like, I don't lunge for months and months and I don't even, I'm not even, so as I said, I'm not even into your traditional lunging. I mean, what are you achieving there? Um, one, I know a lot of you guys are having problems with your horses rushing around one way. So that's only teaching the horse. It, it's only going to have negative consequences because if you follow equitation science principles, and I know I re I've got a training, I've actually got training coming up next week in the um, in the membership academy going through the whole process of how I've retrained a, a horse that I have. I've videoed everything. I've got like 56 videos now from day one when I've started with him to where he is now. I've videoed everything from where I start. So I'm so excited with that. Um, so they're going to be a live training and I'm going to work with you guys. So I'm going to go through every single step of how I've got him to where he is now. So that's really exciting. Um, and I can show you in there um, what I do. So you, you're going to presume that they're unbalanced. Um, so what's unbalanced look like? They're leaning in, okay, so they can't bend. So it's it, an off-the-track thoroughbred. So a thoroughbred in racing, they go in, imagine they go in a straight line, okay, generally or around a big track. Um, they tend to um, work on the forehand or they lean into the bit, okay? So you can imagine it. And in, in racing and galloping, uh, when we're up doing our gallops and our pace work, they're actually taught, we have a, they're taught to actually lean into the bit, lean into it. So they're using the bit and they're using their weight into the mouth and their weight on their head. And they actually use the pressure of the bit onto their bars of the mouth to help them balanced. So you can sort of see they haven't got any self courage. They depend on the bit and leaning into the bit to help them balance. So the first thing we need to do is to teach them to be in self courage, just in your basic stop and go. Um, 
I'm also going to presume that an off the track thoroughbred is going to have body problems. Okay, they have a lot of, um, but when I say you've had a vet check, so when you come to body problems, they they may have um, old scar tissue, old muscle tears um, that have sort of you know that 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 have knotted up. Um, that they can be quite often sore around the the lumbar area and it's a sacroiliac because there's a massive amount of strain put on a thoroughbred's body in racing um so i look at you know when you've had your horse vet checks so just say you're bringing in an off the track thoroughbred i look at it more of a rehabilitation okay and i take it slow and i go right back to the basics of just in hand and i mean this is really basic if you go into my youtube videos i've got just a couple of videos working with tommy where i'm just teaching him stop and go and i know it looks completely unrelated and it probably looks boring to people you know um but to teach him stop and go in hand just and standing there is actually teaching him self-carriage uh it, it doesn't sound related but it is it's so important to train go right back to your basics and train stop and go in hand to lightness and i'm going back to following um the equitation science training and shaping scale here um, I'll put up, as I said, I'm going to have a, um, some training coming up next week, which I'm going to go through all of this. I talk about it in my online course, and I think I've got some links to it in, in the group here. I have, if you go into the guide section, I talk about, um, there's free resources there where I talk about stop and go. Um, I think, it's, so going to first of all, presuming um, that your horse is unbalanced and, and I can't bend. So once again, going back to a thoroughbred, racehorse okay they're muscled and they're usually muscled very tightly okay you'll see they're quite often very um solid in their neck once again that's leaning into the bit and bracing and using all that that heaviness at the front to balance themselves and when they're racing they sort of drag they pull themselves along by their height on by their forelegs and then they push from their hind end but they pull themselves along from their from their big shoulders on their forelegs and in galloping in racing they fl they come down so they're more in a horizontal position and they're flattening out so then all of a sudden we get them off the track and we want them to be in self-carriage and to go from this flat muscle solid lump of elite athlete you know equine to then shifting weight to their hind end excuse me i've got a little hiccup here to putting weight on their, their hindquarters, which they're probably sore in and probably have scar tissue and some wear and tear there. And then what we want to do is then teach them to bend, what, expect them to bend around left and right on a circle. And if you imagine, just say you're in a yoga class, I've done yoga, <laughs> um, and or even a fitness class or something, and the um, instructor says, you know, you, you, for instance, if you're doing your head on your knees, um, I think that or you know it, it, uh, some people can go right down okay and just so you're in there and you just can't go past okay a certain amount you have not got the flexibility to do it to go up then and for the instructor for your teacher to go and push you down and tie you down with your head down there okay would be extremely painful okay and it just would not be ethical you don't do that in yoga do you um so you can imagine the same with a horse okay so how do you get or just say you're doing a side bend okay and oh i'm really flexible this way okay i'll just come into the screen and i can i'm quite flexible oh, actually for this right at the moment but just say i can't go further this way so just this is imagine you're left and right okay with your horse so they can go around to the left really really you know sort of okay but oh they're stuck they kind of go around to the right so me forcing me down is going to be painful going to be sore i can't do it there's going to be resistance okay so i can't do it the same with your horse if they can't do it they're going to resist they're going to show tension they're going to show stress um so how do we get them to actually and also too you have to they physically probably can't do it but they also do they understand what you're asking now this is where it goes all the way back to your in-hand work and teaching them 
every individual aid. For example, if you're lunging around to the right, okay, first of all, you need to have, they physically may not be able to do it because of their musculature, okay, and even, uh, you know, if their muscle, just say they're a bit like a banana, because horses have a left and right. If they've been racing, just say, I'm in Australia, okay, so if they've been racing, clockwise okay where we are in new south wales sydney okay we go around and in racing um they um you know very most trade but they 90 percent of the time work in the one direction non-stop so they must non-stop so their muscles are going to develop that way and then they're sort of leaning on the forehand as well um doing that so to ask them to go the other way they're going to be muscled they're not going to have the bend so imagine a banana so they've sort of been bent sort of around that way and then all of a sudden you want them to go around that way their muscles are not going to allow them to do it okay so we have to work with them a bit like a physiotherapist um and so just say we've got this bend we're going around this way really good we're stuck here okay so like yoga you do not for first of all don't do um more on this side to try and get flexibility if anything do less so we have to slow like massage we have to slowly release the muscles feel and uh, um, slowly release the muscles and feel you know ask them just a little bit of give and this is where it comes back to your in-hand work training your stop and go um i'm gonna have a sip of my coffee here and talking about being sore geez i'm so, <laughs> i'm sorry my back and my neck i wouldn't be good as a horse being lunged at the moment i'd be putting up a stink um so it i see us as as a trainer of an off-the-track thoroughbred see yourself as their physiotherapist as their massage therapist as their their retrainer so instead of see you have to sort of um change their body and change and loosen the muscles and yeah. this this comes back to working with their body and teaching them things like head down so let's see let's break it up it all comes back to breaking up every single movement so lunging what do you want first of all first of all if they can't go which way am I going Oh, well, I'm going this way. So you see me opposite. So I'm left this way. So they can't go here. So then look, so imagine that the muscles on the, okay, so I'm going around to the right, the left, and I'm all good. So I'm sort of a bit like a Madonna this way, okay? So the muscles are uh, lengthened on this side, but on, the, on, on, the, on this side, okay, they're tight. So then you want the horse to go around this way, and imagine those tight constricted muscles the horse is not going to be able to do it those muscles will not give they're muscled they're locked that to, to to get them to loosen up is going to take rehabilitation is going to take in hand movements is going to take work at walk okay if you can't get some bend and flexion at walk in hand there's no way in the world that you're going to get it at trot it's just going to stress the horse they're going to run and they're going to gallop they can't do it they can't bend okay putting side reins on or putting um uh, uh what do you call it i think they're pessoas and all that stuff is just forcing the horse into a posture it's stressful for them um it's forcing the body and the body the muscles resist against um if you're forcing a muscle they're going to resist i mean i worked in fitness i mean in my previous life i was actually a fitness instructor um and with stretching forcing a muscle to stretch actually creates the muscle to resist and contract so you know, the yoga the, the the yoga perspective and outlook of anything so with yoga you only go to where you can go and then you stop and you allow the muscle to relax into it and then you slowly move a little bit further and a little bit further over time over lessons okay and that's how we need to look at retraining our off the track thoroughbred so they're very contracted on one side the side that they can't go on you can imagine just so around their ribs in their shoulder their shoulder muscles can't give to allow them to bend that way so how do we solve that with in hand work and for asking so we go back to teaching them to turn so and we teach every single um, movement that we want in just say you're lunging around to the left so what does that compose of bailey to have a proper lunge to the left okay we want a bend through their body okay to, for them to um not fall out so i'm sorry dave i'm probably getting completely off track with you with your um question but first of all i'll just read the question out again so i don't go on some tangent which i tend to do 
time, can you talk about what unbalanced horses look, feel like versus quiet symptoms, early signs of body problems that should be looked further into? I would always look further into body problems anyway, um, have body work because they're more than often going to have some issues. Um, in saying that, as there's a wonderful vet um, and um, uh, she's amazing, Renee Tucker actually, uh, and it's called TNT. So when um, I'm able to, I'm actually going to do the diploma. She's a vet that does chiropractic and body work and, and all of that. And she's incredible. Um, and she's she's actually said that um, with without having surgery, we can work with kissing spine um, and helping the horse to, um, you know, to relieve the pain from kissing spine and actually get rid of the kissing spine, which is fusion of the bones. But um, this all comes down to correct work. So I would be looking at, uh, you know, I look look at it as more as um, classical dressage type training where you're training them in hand. Bailey. Um, so if the horse is showing resistance, okay, there's something wrong. The horse is telling you that there is something wrong um, and to go back. So definitely, so I'll answer the question here. Um, how, can you talk about what unbalanced horses look, feel like versus quiet symptoms, early signs of body problems that should be looked further into? Like in the early stages of training after a past vetting, how do you know if the horse is just unbalanced and can continue working through it versus has an issue with the body potentially and should be slowed down. So I'm going to answer that by saying um, you should never continually just work through it um, because that's forcing something. If your horse can't do something, there's a reason why they can't do it. Um, and you look at why. Is it they haven't got the flexibility? Is it you haven't taught them the in-hand work first? They don't understand what you're asking. Is it pain related? Um, so if you've had a vet check, uh and you had there's been nothing particularly diagnosed well at the moment you think okay well we can start off with the in-hand work have you taught them the in-hand work so i'm going to go back to breaking down the lunch you should just say your horse is um struggling to go around on a circle to the left either in hand um or under saddle okay have you taught the horse to um flex do they understand the flex aid at the pole so let's break up the the left bend so the left bend you need a curvature through the the spine so you need the muscles that need to be able to curve that way okay so just say we're going to the left so the muscles are able to curve like a banana lengthen on the left and they're contracting on the right am i going around to the left no they're contracting on the left and lengthening to the right <laughs> um can they do that how are you asking too much of your horse then does the horse understand what um you're asking so part of the bend is a curvature now part of this bend is can the horse turn so part of a bend is your turn aid if the horse is falling in which means they can't bend for a start part of the bend is asking the horse to step out just say on the left with their left front foreleg can, have you taught them to step out with their left front foreleg in turn in hand first or are they turning around okay on the bend and falling in okay so falling in on their shoulder not stepping out with their left front foreleg so first of all you want to make sure that you've taught in hand the horse that when they when you ask for pressure and they ask for a look around to the left okay you ask them to teach them to step out with their left front foreleg I know this probably sounds, it's so easier to demonstrate. And as I said, I've got so many videos of it that I'm putting together um, uh, with showing how, how I've done this with Ty. Um, so you have to teach every individual um, aid and a response first, and then they put it together in a turn. So in a turn, we want them to be able to step out okay with their shoulder their left front foreleg if we're going around to the left if we're going around to the right instead of falling in okay and they're falling in on their shoulder we teach them with a rain um rain aid or a lead rope rain uh, rate lead rope pressure to step out that's our turn aid so they step out with their left front foreleg and then they're balanced okay coming around the turn they're not falling in so that's that's training the aids but also rehabilitate that's part of teaching them to use their body in a different way okay and as they're using their body in a different way they're going to become more balanced more supple 
Um, also too, with with the turn, so we want to teach them flexion. Okay, so have you taught the horse to lower their head? So in hand, and I've got a YouTube video with this, teaching your horse to lower their head. So you'll see off the track thoroughbreds can be quite high in the head carriage and braced or lean down, okay? But if you teach the horse, quite often an off the track thoroughbred doesn't even know how to give. If you stand in front of your horse and give with pressure, ask them to give the pressure of the lead rope, they'll brace against it. So they sort of brace against pressure or they lean into pressure. So you need to teach your horse to give to pressure first. When that you can teach them to lower their head, just drop their head and release, and then they can carry it. Because quite often they don't even know that they can release their head. They don't know that they can release those muscles. They've braced and they've been so rock solid and leaning to pressure that for many years often, they come into racing as a yearling, okay? They get broken in as, as, a, as a yearling, um, broken in as the old school, the educated under saddle. And quite often they're racing at, at two years old. So they only know one way how to use their body. And that body um, has had a lot of stress put on it. Um, so it takes time to rehabilitate their body um, and also retrain to teach them another um, another way of how to use it. Um, so the flexion, okay, so you look at our turn, okay, so have you horse, taught your horse that they can lower their head to pressure and then when they've lowered the head, I teach this, so I teach them to lower the head, then I teach them to release at the pole. So a little flexion, a little give to the bit because an off the track thoroughbred will lock their jaw and they won't give. So you're lunging around to the left, First of all, they can't bend their body, okay, because the muscles can't give. Secondly, they've locked their jaw and they've locked their pole and they're, they're not giving. So you need to break it up into eeny weeny little steps. Have I taught my horse to flex? A flex is just a, have I taught him to do that? Does he give? Okay, have I taught my horse to turn? Step out with the left front foreleg instead of leaning on the step out with the right front foreleg have i taught my horse to slow down okay by lead pressure um speed up with a light little tap with the dressage whip okay does he understand the cues okay yes i've done that okay tick i've done that tick i've done that okay i've got my horse nice and responsive in hand okay he lowers his head in hand he stops um to a light response. Okay, now I'm ready to go and move forward and start to stand out and face him and do this in more of a lunging position. Okay, so then you ask for the same cues um, in more of a lunging position. So I hope it makes sense. I hope you, you can see that it's like building blocks and you build on one another. So um, the horse is going to be unbalanced uh, unless they've been retrained and they've been taught to be in self-carriage just with these basic responses. Um, so Nev, I just want to say that presume that they're going to be unbalanced. Also presume that um, they're going to have body problems unless you've done some really good rehabilitation. There may not be um, severe body problems in that, you know, kissing spine or something, but just generally, um, unless you've really given some suppling exercises and done your in hand, they're going to be they're going to have body problems and they're going to have a lack of flexibility. So I'm going to go to a an example I have with Ty here. So before I go on to this example, I'll just say, um, Nev, to go back and, and slow down for a start and never push through anything, okay? But instead, um, work through the steps in hand, basic responses, work up there, tick them off. Have I got the light responses? And then um, go up from there. I, as I said, I have training coming up for that. Um, it's also equitation science training. So not only the training that I have, but if you follow equitation science um, international, um, it's a it's a training scale. I have some information on it in um, the guide section of this group. Uh, and if you want to find out more or want to follow some training on how to do this, let me know in the comments um, and I can um, give you a link to the equitation science um, books and also videos as well as my training that's coming up next week. Um, so with Ty, for instance, so Ty's been a really interesting one. So he's an off the track thoroughbred that I have in for a client and he had no top line he had a very and this is the horse that i'm actually using for the training series that i've videoed his whole his whole process so it'll be really interesting to follow i'm so glad that i've um, filmed everything 
So he had no top line. He was incredibly weak. Okay. He looked like he's only a nine year old. He was eight at the time, but he was a nine year old off the track thoroughbred that had an extensive race career. He had about 70 starts. Um, and he showed signs of, um, he'd had done a suspensory ligament and things like that. So he was a really seasoned, um, racehorse. So a, a typical racehorse has had an extensive race career, um, been racing, even though he's been in pain and had injuries and things like that. Beautiful natured horse. And then he, I knew that just looking at him because I go back into their racing history, but I thought, geez, he has no top line. He also had a drop fetlock. Okay. Which means that one fetlock is lower to the ground than the other fetlock, which um, is, a, is a, a sign that he's, he's had a suspensory ligament injury in the past. So I, 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 um, do an overall look so i get an off the track thoroughbred i do an overall look and i go okay what am i looking at here um i look at their body i i feel that like you can because i've worked with them for so long and i've learned now um and i'm learning all the time we're always learning you feel their muscles you know i always feel the horse um like doing massage courses and things like that's really good um because we need to be very tactile horses can't tell us where they're sore we need to um they t they they tell us what's wrong through their behaviors through how their body looks how their body feels what they're doing so it's up to us to work out what is happening and what they're telling us they're always telling us something it's not up to them to learn how we what we you know how we communicate it's up to us to be able to read the horse and learn what they're telling us um so i looked at ty and i thought well he's got a very weak top line so we're definitely we're not going to be out there um you know under saddle in four weeks okay um and then i looked at his drop fetlock and then i went back and i looked at his racing history and i went through his whole history i even went back to the gear changes that they have so this is in australia they have gear changes i could see that back as a two-year-old he was showing signs of um leaning in his races they had what they called a bubble cheeker on so he was leaning so i'm thinking okay as someone who's ridden racehorses for the, you know nearly 18 years i know what leaning means um, and that they're trying to get weight off. They can't, you know, there's a reason. So he was showing signs of there an issue because he was leaning in his races. And so they just put some gear on to try and fix that. He was hanging, I should say, hanging. Um, that continued all through his career, actually. He then had a break. So I can see um, then he had a couple of vet suspended because of a vet check. So a couple of issues where the vet needed to look at him after a race. Uh, he then had, if I look through his racing career, I can see he's had eight nine months off here and a year off here so he's had a year off racing because he's had an injury something's happened okay with the way his fat lock is he's you can see that he's done a, at least one injury as he's done a suspensory ligament so i put a picture together okay if, you, if not everyone can do this because you don't have access to the records but if you can ask someone to look at the record history of your off the track thoroughbred um and then look at um uh, so then I looked at his confirmation. So I get a bit of a picture of what's happening. I then felt his muscles. Um, so that's basically what I do to start. Then I follow my um, step-by-step -step retraining protocol. Uh, first of all, the rehabilitation, I checking for ulcers. <clears throat> so another thing too, make sure it's like a process of elimination before um, you bring your horse in work. Have I scoped for ulcers? Because that's going to be a problem if you're lunging your horse to the left, if they're not wanting to go forward ulcers is a big sign of resistance in horses you know they they don't want to they're resistant under saddle they're resistant on the lunge and so we did that we checked um ty for ulcers he was scoped um he's um he was checked for he's he's now well he's now had a chiropractor but he's had body work but he was vet checked over he was checked for ulcers he had his teeth done and a scope for ulcers um and then he comes to me and he comes to he do, I do the in-hand work i've been very slow with ty very um very much a rehabilitation program and it's really paid off but all through his whole program i've just hit you know things like ah oh, he's just um not like i can i can feel so he'd be going really nicely under saddle when I, once again this is all in the videos and i can walk you through this as as once i bring the training out but you follow the process step by step and then if they start to show resistance so i recently have been riding ty and 
okay he wants to so he's been coming down nice on the bit okay so he's up to that where he's got the muscle strength and everything to learn to self-carriage and then all of a sudden i'll get on him and he's a lot more resistant in front okay so he's just he doesn't want to soften he's i can feel like a stuckness there's a resistance so i've already taught him to go forward nice and lightly off the aid so he's very responsive to my leg i have to keep reminding him but he's very responsive to that okay so then i'll get on him and it's like something's different he feels resistant and the, the old the old attitude and on it you know we can get frustrated and like oh my god will you just soften will you just soften i don't do that anymore but i know many years ago i've been there don't worry but <laughs> you know like it gets very frustrating and it's like no you've got to there's something wrong he's telling me something he felt a lot more willing to go forward it's harder for them okay so i mean it's hard we're training them so we're, once we've gone through all the steps and everything and we've got up to our active walk and trot under saddle and asking them to work over the back this is hard for them this is like we're at their fitness instructor as well so we've got to be very aware aware that they can do it physically that they're not sore anywhere so i noticed with ty he was resistant so he was wanting to brace his neck and his head um and i could feel that he was struggling Whereas the day before he felt really good. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, there's something wrong. Um, and so I, instead of like trying to force him and push him through it, I mean, I did the session, but I thought, no, he just doesn't feel right. So I have to go back now um, and work out well, what's happening. What, why is he, oh, you know, like, oh my God, there's another thing wrong <laughs> type of thing. Well, I don't think like that, um, but I sort of think for the poor, for the poor owners, they're wonderful, wonderful. His owners are wonderful, but it's like, you know, uh, okay, what's happening now? Why is he telling me this? We've been scoped, we've been this, we've been that. So we've had girth issues with him. Okay. And then you go and feel like he's, he's um, been, you know, we're now under um, an equine osteopath. He's really wonderful, but <clears throat> I, I did I, one one he got an infection okay uh he had an accident so we had him on antibiotics and but okay phenylbutazone so um that can really trigger ulcers also the antibiotics can cause hindgut acidosis and things like that so I, I i felt like that there was something happening in his gut i felt like he was uncomfortable in his gut okay so he's also became through these stages he became very very girthy and cranky he's always been a bit girthy um but we've had him scoped as i said so i'm like okay he's really girthy he's been scoped um we've changed the girth and we've we've have had a look at the girth but he's girthy even when he's being brushed now that's a big sign of ulcers so i've gone back and i thought okay um and particularly ulcers so horses have a lot of their acid in their stomach moves around a lot under exercise um antibiotics and but um can turn um cause ulcers literally overnight apparently don't take this is only what i've been um within seven days if you're on a course of and up butte for seven days it, it can cause ulcers even if you've treated for ulcers before so his signs and the fact that he's been on butte and antibiotics i'm thinking ulcers so i've gone back to an ulcer um looking at treating ulcers again and also a gut health preventative um he's not on medication but more of gut health preventatives um, and a natural version of how to treat ulcers and I'm just observing how he is okay I'm not just going to presume they're going to fix it um, so I've done that and I noticed that he was a lot better okay so then I rode him okay and I'm like oh he's a lot more relaxed so okay I've I've I'm giving him some something for treating ulcers and um, to line the gut and he's a lot better so that's telling me that he was telling me something and he's not as girthy okay so if he's we've also changed the girth and another thing with ty now this is where you, you learn to feel their body and their muscles on the left hand side he's very uh, up underneath his girth area he's very very so on his left hand side around his elbow and underneath his girth area is a lot more overdeveloped in the muscles but he's also very tight and stringy there so the muscles are very tight and stringy okay so he's compensated in racing by using his body he's um he did his off front so his right front suspensory ligament that and that's also um we've had the um chiropractor um the osteopath has said that he has limited flexion there he's lost 10 to 20 percent of his flexion in that um foreleg and that's the one that he's done his suspensory ligament on so we know that in trot for example 
Um, he struggled with that front foreleg, so that's going to affect, and also in canter, his um, near side. So he's compensated, so he's overdeveloped um, on the near side. He's had some issues over his near side um, around his lumbar area, um, his hock areas, and that he's been a bit funny with the near side generally all up not wanting to engage that near hind okay so going around to my left i think nah he just doesn't want to engage come up over the back step under with his near hind he just feels resistant so i don't push i don't push through resistant uh resistance um if in doubt don't push through it okay um you don't want to have that you know forcing them through you go back and have the more of the yoga rehabilitation baby step type of attitude and going back ticking off your boxes ticking off your basic responses have i trained go back to your basic responses are they like can they bend um so then i've gone back and um so now with ties so we've changed the girth because also too um being girthed up in racing so quite often the girths will not be elastic i've done a video on this check your girth is it elastic on both sides really important to have an elastic girth um because it's restrictive if they if you have a girth that's not elastic at the at the buckles at the points um or in the middle okay it's going to restrict their diaphragm it restricts their ribs um and in racing and also we noticed that tyre's girth wasn't elastic so we looked at that i'm learning every day myself um so we've changed his girth but also too in racing being uh, on the left hand side girth quite often the girth's reefed up okay and it's reefed up one side it's not even you want the girth normally even and gradually put up on both side that doesn't happen a lot of the most times in racing it's rush 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 reef the girth up and that's caused that also couldn't cause um issues and muscle tears and tight ligaments and pressure on that left hand side i've been speaking to my subtle fitter about that as well um so we're massaging that side to gradually help him so that tightness underneath around that elbow and girth area is going to because he finds it hard to bend so you see my videos he finds it hard to bend he's he's still going beautiful now but he's finding it hard still finds it harder to go around on the right so you can imagine that bunch of lock solid um muscles under on, on, behind his elbow on the left hand side that we've discovered that's not going to give okay that's part of his, his whole body see their body body as a whole you know it's got to work in unison and if that locked muscle underneath behind his elbow on the left can't give because it's tight how's he going to bend around to the right Okay, so my job is to gradually ask, you know, if not force him, like force him around in tight right hand circles, you know, you're going to bend, you're going to bend, but to, to just be as a rider on top of him, not do tight circles, but big, large curves to gradually ask for a little bit more bend to sort of gradually ask those muscles to give, um, to give and then on the ground massage okay in hand massage those muscles to ask them to release so i'm not forcing those muscles i'm aware of his limitations there um and that he wants to fall in so when i'm going around to the right okay he wants to fall in um so what do i do once again it all goes back to your tick off have i taught him okay to yield leg yielding have, does he yield and move off my right leg to help him bend through the, the, his barrel his rib cage have i taught him is he giving to the bit i've taught him to soften i've taught him to flex so i've taught him to turn so when he wants to lean in to the right going around i actually ask him for a turn okay i don't try and force him in a circle i ask so he's leaning in so he's falling in on his shoulder he's not wanting to bend that way so i just ask him for his right turn i ask him to step out with his right front foreleg which then balances his shoulders up again then what i can do is a little bit of a leg yield i ask him to move off okay my right leg so um to help him sort of move out and then he might want to fall in again so then i ask him for a little bit of turn again turning is fantastic like seriously i go in my videos um i've got so many videos to upload guys i'm just it's i've got so much for you and it's just a matter of time but turning is so good doing your zigzags and this is all equitation science principles so um you can you can look up this now um through equitation science and as i said pop in the comments if you want some links to it um let me know um, so the zigzags teach them to balance their shoulders and to help teach them to supple. So um, I've broken down your turns. Your turn is broken up into individual responses. Your turn is broken up 
um, you're going around on the right hand a right hand circle is broken up to your right hand turn okay your flexion aid your right rein aid um, and your inside leg aid and these aren't all done together you always give your your, your rein aids individually separate okay so not I'm asking him to turn and move and all of that one go. So, for example, I'm going straight. He wants to lean in. Okay, so he wants to lean in, going around to the right. So, first of all, he's leaning in on his right-hand shoulder. Um, so, I ask for my right-hand turn. Ask him to step out. So, he's now balanced up. He's back on the track. Okay, with his right front foreleg. Then I ask him, then what usually happens is when he leans in and he's, he wants to slow down. So I've asked him to step out. So I ask him to go forward. So I'll go back to our basic responses. Have we got our stop and go? Has he slowed down? He slowed down. So I ask for my forward rhythm again. Then I ask for my turn. Okay, because he's leaning in on his shoulder. So I ask for my right hand turn. And now he's not leaning in again, but he slowed down again. So then I ask for my forward, then I ask for my turn, then I might ask for some yield. So you can see that it's like, yeah, I tell you what, riding and training is so good for being in the present moment, to teach you to be in the present moment, to teach you to feel what's happening underneath you, to, to come back and feel what's happening underneath you, to get out of your head and start to be more tactile and in the feeling sense. But we also need the, 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 um, what do you call it, the right and the left brain as well, because we need to learn, okay, learn, teach them these individual responses. Um, so that's an example. I've probably gone on for, <laughs> I've probably gone on for a long time here. I hope this makes sense. Um, and that, um, because I know a few guys are having problems with rushing and the horse not wanting to go forward and that, they're telling you there's something wrong okay if a horse is showing something there is something wrong um so you go right back to basics um and always eliminate pain okay because the only way a horse can tell us that they're in pain is by their behavior and how they look and feel in their body mm. and you, you um treating ulcers hind gut acidosis ulcers and all of that is such a big problem in horses so you always go back and you've got to eliminate okay Am I, am I following, have I gone back to, am I follow, have I taught my horse the basic responses? Do they even understand how to turn around to the right and the left? And can they physically do it? Okay, now if they're going around to, um, rushing around to the left or the right, well, they can't physically do it and or they don't understand what you're asking, okay? Um, and just say, oh, well, I've taught them QA so they can do it to the right. No, no, you've got to teach them in hand. The QA, so your voice aids and everything come after you've done your pressure release. You can teach your horse voice aids and QA aids and classical conditioning, which is that's what that's called. But that comes after your pressure release, teaching them literally in hand because horses aren't, they're not going to listen to a voice aid if they can't do something. Um, it that they listen that you pressure release is their first go to that's how you teach them and then you can add on just say for stop for instance you're asking your horse to slow down with your rein aids under saddle or in hand you stop with the reins okay or you stop with the lead rope but then you can um, add that so you can say whoa or stop and then apply the the rein aid okay or the leg aid and they learn then that's called um uh, classical conditioning so you're adding on another cue so they learn that when they hear whoa or stop okay that the rain aid comes after it so they associate the stop rain aid with the verbal cue so you'll learn to teach them that they'll eventually stop okay by um, just saying whoa or another example is in your dressage and that okay so when we slow down so we've taught our horse to stop and go in hand um, and then we've taught our horse to stop and go by the rein aid. So then what we do with our posture, so in dressage and in any riding really, we use our posture in riding. So as we're slowing down, we actually sit up tall, we slow our seat, okay? And then, you know, we could, well, dressage is supposed to be, you know, you can't see any, any aid. So the horse has learnt to slow down and stop just coming back from walk to trot by you slowing your seat sitting up tall with your posture the horse can feel that and they learn to stop by you just changing your posture okay but they're not going to learn that straight you need to teach them to stop with the rain aid first because if you're out in cross country okay and there's adrenaline happening and the horse is all all excited okay they're not going to stop okay by you sitting up tall or leaning back or whatever okay they're going to stop by rain pressure so you go to your primary teaching them you stop and go in hand and under saddle first by reins 
by your rain aid. Um, and then you can add on the more subtle aids such as your voice aids that afterwards. But of a horse going around to the left, um, galloping on a lunge and not responding to worry, well, that's they're not going to respond. Um, I hope that makes sense. So probably I, I talk a lot. Um, and I hope that's answered your question. Um, Neve, um, let me know if I haven't pronounced your name right, but I'll just read out the question again if you've just popped on um, and you can sort of put two and two together with what, <laughs> what I've been talking about. Um, so Neve's question was, can you talk about what unbalanced horses look, feel like versus quiet symptoms? <coughs> Bailey, always have dogs barking in my videos. Quiet symptoms, early signs of body problems that should be looked further into. Um, well, body problems. So looking at, you know, if you've done if you've done everything else, so you you've gone back to your basic training, you've trained stop and go in hand. The horse understands what what you're asking. You aren't forcing them into it. They can physically, you know, bend. Okay, you've taught the turn and everything that, and you've been very um progressive with being aware that they're going to be tight one way and not the other way um and then you still see resistance they're not looking right they're putting the head up and bracing when you've taught the head down and giving in that well then there's something going on like my example with ty okay i've already gone into a stage where he's going very nicely under saddle he's still very green in that you know he's um he's learning but that it takes years to get horses you know really solid um physically and also consolidated in everything um when it going getting up to the levels of competing in that um but i looked at so i've already known that he's very tuned into his aids he's very light to his responses i've already known that and i could and he was going lovely beforehand you know the day before um so i'm like well i know that i've trained him he's very light to responses okay i know that that's that's not an issue because he's got very solid um training underneath him now so there's something going on he's telling me because he doesn't want to bend and he doesn't want to go forward he just did not want to step underneath him he did not want to work up over the back and i thought nah there's something wrong here okay so that's how i worked out that there's something wrong okay because i've eliminated i already know how well trained he is in his basic responses um so that's what i've done so that's how you sort of look into it we need to be like a, a detective okay we need to sort of go okay what's happening here what have i done tick this off i've done this i've done that okay so now what i'm going to say never um it's don't have this attitude of working through it eh? but that's not going to teach anything working through it because it's not about working through it it's working with your horse's body in a very kind empathetic what's the word empathetic um and having more of a yoga holistic approach to rehabilitation approach to it um horses are flight animals they're fear animals they're going to run from pain they're going to run from anything so you don't want to work your horse that they're going to have to endure pain or um discomfort or things like that we want to make it enjoyable for them we want them i mean when they get to a level where they need to work over the back okay it's like you know they're starting to relax and they start to enjoy it but you want to make sure they've got the balance the strength and everything and just do bit by bit okay and reward them for everything that they do give them a reward you know reward them for their their, their work don't overwork them keep their sessions short and then reward them you know um with some nice hay afterwards also to a quick tip never work your horse on an empty stomach um because when they're moving okay the acid splashes around in their stomach it's going to splash up on the walls it's going to aggravate any ulcers that are already there it's going to cause ulcers so i always recommend um always have your horse if they've been out on pasture at least give them some i give a loosen alfalfa hay is really good but make sure that they've got hay okay i always have a hay net up when i tie them up um, and brush them and groom them and saddle them up make sure they've got um you can feed a biscuit of hay half a biscuit if they've been out on pasture of hay in their stomach before you lunge them or work them in any way um, otherwise they're going to quite often be in pain um, from acid splashing up onto the stomach walls we can talk more into that but just a tip there so yeah look guys i might leave it there um i hope that has helped um any questions please pop them in the comments below there's going to be a replay 
um, of this live. So pop them in the comments below um, and I'll answer them for you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for the question, Neve. Once again, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. And let me know if this has answered this for you. I'm happy to have a look at any videos. If you want to go into more detail on what, what may be going on, um, let me know. Just pop the, you know, in a comment um, or in a post and I can look at that. But yeah, I'll leave it there. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I'll be back on in next week's Q&A next Sunday. And also, if you wanted to find out more about um, the training series, so I've got um, in the Off The Track Thoroughbred Success Academy, it's a monthly membership. Um, you can, or if you can buy the, the Kickstart course as well outright and you get the monthly membership. So I've got the a whole training series um, coming up starting next Wednesday, uh, Wednesday the 2nd of March. Um, and we're, I'm just going to go through, so I'm going to go through every, um, the whole process of how I've retrained Ty. Um, it's not going, so I just want to give a heads up. It's um, not a quick fix. Um, it's going over all the basic foundations. It's going over how horses learn. Um, so we're going to learn all of that. Um, I'm going to go through every single, single step that I've done with him. So it's not like you're going to have this quick fix of um, getting somewhere, but you're going to have a really in-depth um I mean, it's going to be a full course by, by the time we end, end, end this. It's just going to be a really big full course. It's going to be wonderful, but I'm going to do live training with it. So, yeah, just a heads up that it's it's not going to be a quick fix, but it's going back to where you start with your off-the-track thoroughbred, right back down to the basic foundations of in hand, stop and go, and working up from there. And seriously, it's the best way to go, um, slow and steady, um, building really strong foundations and rehabilitation, uh, having the rehabilitation side um, addressed and looking at it as uh, rehabilitation when you have an off the track thoroughbred is just um, so worthwhile because you're going to get um, you're going to have a happy horse for a start and you're doing everything correctly that nurtures the well-being of the horse um, so yeah um, let me know if you want to know some more training about that um, um, in the comments and I'll forward you some links and yeah have a lovely day and a, one, a big welcome to all our new members in the group as well um, I'll pop up a welcome post but um, yeah thank you for joining the group and I hope you find this group really valuable um, anytime you have any questions just pop up a post um, just share your experiences this group is for you guys so I will see you in the group Okay, bye.